Hello, learners. Uh, welcome again to today's session. I am instructor C.P. Ringo Frederick. In our class today, it is a continuation of what we were doing earlier on. Recall that we had introduced application of uh, business data analytics in our management accounting, where in our previous class we had talked about regression analysis. As per our syllabus, remember, like uh, what you require to understand in application of uh, basically business data analytics in management accounting, we dealt with a uh, regression analysis in our previous class. Today's session allowed us to focus on high-low method, a very interesting, uh, a very interesting uh, cost estimation method that uh, at least if uh, we have the knowledge of the same, will always be very, very good in whatever that you are doing to analyze your data. Later on, of course, we'll be looking at uh, estimating price, revenue, and profit margins. That is, of course, we'll be using the concept of uh, data tables, which i had already introduced earlier on. So these are what I'll want us to focus on today. That is the uh, application of BDA in management accounting. Specifically, we are talking of high-low. Specifically, we are talking of high-low method. So looking at that case, these are what you should be able to understand, my good students. So basically looking at a uh, high-low method, uh, there are some of uh, the main items that you must always tend to basically understand. First of all, it is from the concept of what high-low method is, the concept, the main concept behind high-low method. Uh, you will find that uh, this is uh, one of uh, the cost estimation methods that uh, we normally tend to use at any given point you want to estimate our cost. So it is uh, simply a technique uh, of cost accounting which is uh, used to split the mixed costs into variable and uh, fixed components into variable and fixed component. Of course, considering the highest and uh, lowest level of uh, activities. And uh, you will find that uh, at this point, at any given point in time, when we have to use silo method, there are some of the main items that must always tend to click at the back of our mind. That is to say, you must be able to identify the highest level of an activity, the highest level and the lowest level of an activity. These are the level that you must always tend to identify. Of course, what will help us to identify this level, of course, basically, we'll be looking at what? We'll be looking at the value, the values of x, because as we had introduced earlier on in our equation, we say that basically x will be the independent variable. So in this context, my good students, we should be able to understand that uh, this is a cost estimation uh, technique. And at this point, we'll have to split our cost into variable and fixed component, where it would be our task to identify the highest and lowest level of, of an activity. And uh, having noted that uh, we'll be required to basically divide this bit, fixed costs, and uh, of course, uh, variable cost, it would be essential for us to also learn how can we determine these components? For variable cost, this will be very easy. We'll just be taking uh, these figures as follows. We'll be taking the highest activity cost, highest activity cost, minus the lowest activity cost, minus the lowest activity cost. We're going to divide by the highest activity units, highest yeah, talk about highest activity unit minus our lowest activity unit. Lowest activity unit. So these are how we'll uh, always be kind of uh, considering at any given point you want to determine what our variable cost. Later on, you see like I only be looking at this problem, things will always be very easy. Now, after I have this in mind, Another question that we're going to ask ourselves then is uh, how can we determine our how can we determine our fixed cost? To determine our fixed cost, this will be very easy because to determine our fixed cost, ideally we'll just be taking this as follows. My fixed cost, I'll be taking it as follows. We are going to take our highest activity cost, highest activity cost. Highest activity cost, of course, we less our variable cost that we determine per unit minus our highest activity unit minus our highest 
activity unit activity unit so in other words basically this is uh, as if uh, we are kind of uh, redoing uh, our remember our cost estimation equation which is always in uh, the form of y is equal y is equal to y is equal to a plus bx right these are cost equation that we normally tend to use most of the times where a basically stands for fixed cost b stands for variable cost per unit x stands for the number of units where, whereas as y stands for the total cost so once you're able to understand this concept my good students you'll find that uh, going forward things will always be very easy on our end so applying the high low method in our business data analytics how are we going to work it out see how simple it is we go to this problem one and see what will be required to do like in this case uh i am required basically to estimate the total cost in uh, financial year 2023 I am supposed to estimate our total cost in the financial year 2023 and the forecasted units are as below which i'm given this so the data that you're having basically is for 2022 i am required to estimate our cost in 2023 so therefore how will we go about it so at this point my good it's very important for us to recall what you just studied right now that I need to have the highest level of activities and the lowest level of activities. I'll also be required to basically identify the highest cost and lowest activity uh, cost, as well as highest activity units and lowest activity units. So let us work it out. I need to determine my highest, can have our, we need to determine basically our highest and lowest. So basically you're having highest and lowest 142 let me zoom it to 118 so we need to determine we need to determine our highest levels right of our activity and lowest level of our activity lowest level of our activity remember the basis of this identification basically are the values of x the values of x so here we can have our x and we have our y or we can have it because on the other way maybe you can have y because that is what you're having there as cost and i'm having x either way will work so once we have this my good student the next step that we need to do is basically of course we can identify the highest how will you go about it remember the cost function of no remember the function of max so just do equal sign i need maximum tab the data values these are the data values that you're having of course i close that so in terms of our x maximum is 32500 what about lowest level so the lowest level basically i'm going to use this function of minimum so you just do equal sign minimum i'm going to pick all these so these are our minimum right so basically i'm having the highest level of x and i'm having lowest level of of uh, of uh, of uh, of x so well, how about how can we determine our highest and lowest uh, cost because y is the total cost so in this case other than us just basically looking at it uh, manually suppose you're having a uh, uh, suppose you're having a lot of data you'll find that uh, your eyes will get tired right so the best way here is to use the index function index match remember the functions index match remember the functions index match so these are we are going to use it i'm just going to have my index match so i'll be having my index right tab my data array basically it is i need to collect these inputs from all this data of mine right row number this time round i don't need to have a row per se because i need to match the lowest and highest level so i'm going to introduce my match function so i do match my lookup value basically our lookup value remember i need it to match with what the highest value which is x here so i'm going that should be our lookup value 
And where is this data going to be collected from? It is our lookup array. And my lookup array basically is what? The number of units that you're having here. So in this case, I need exact match. Exact match, which is zero. Mm -hmm. So I can just do uh, zero here, right? Then, of course, uh, to close my uh, formula here, I have to put the area number. Area number, we can have any. In this case, maybe one any value so that in that case this should give us what this should give us the highest level and if you check it out and uh, if you check it out you'll find that uh, 32 basically 32 500 is matching with the 20 268 is matching with the 268 268 746 then in that case of course i also need the lowest so basically what i'm going to do we have to lock our constant values by locking we click f4 i need to lock uh, basically our constant value f4 so that even if i scroll it down here it will just give me the exact value see it just give me what i'm having in terms of the lowest value and which will match of course our which will match uh, that is of course basically which will match the value that we are having here as the lowest so I'm having 20, 780, which is matching, which is matching that. So once we have that case, therefore, I'll have to basically come and identify. I'll have to basically come and have the values. You see the, what you had looked at here, like the highest, uh, highest, uh, uh, basically, uh, we talked of uh, whatever we're having there as highest activity cost lowest activity cost come and identify them here so i'll be having my highest activity cost lowest activity cost talk about uh, highest activity unit highest activity unit lowest activity unit lowest activity unit so basically these are what we should be having right now once we have that in mind of course you've determined all our values are here we have all our values highest of course is that one lowest is that value as per what we are having highest activity unit i'm having that lowest activity unit you're having that now, once we have this case, once we have this case, this will be very easy for us to determine our variable cost. So what will be my variable cost in this case, my good students? A variable cost in this case, it will be very easy because what I'll be having, I'll have to take, of course, my equal sign. In this case, I need to take my highest activity cost minus lowest activity cost we divide by highest activity units minus lowest activity unit here. So that as at the end of the day, whatever that I'll be having will be what? So these are what we should be having. So I'm having data one. I'm having the value of one. Basically, into three decimal place, I'm having 1.406, right? So once we have that bit, the next item to do is for us to determine our fixed cost. Mm -hmm. <coughs> excuse for us to determine our fixed costs and remember what you've said about our fixed cost remember what you've said about our fixed cost which i've clearly stated it here clearly where we say that our fixed costs are be having our highest activity cost minus variable cost uh, per unit times the highest unit so fixed costs here of course i'll be having let me have into bracket my highest or first of all our highest activity cost right minus into bracket our variable cost per unit times our highest activity unit so that in this case my fixed cost will be 223 that would be our fixed cost here 223 zero fifty five. the same case you can do it with the lowest in this case, we've used the highest level. You can have it in so many cases. In this case, we've used the highest level, right? You can also decide to go 
and I use the lowest, whereby for the lowest fees cost, you just be taking, of course, your lowest activity cost minus our variable cost per unit times our lowest activity units here. So it should give us the same value. You see, it's giving us the same, same value. So once we have that in mind, now I have established our fixed cost, which it will be constant all through. So that is to say we can clearly estimate our financial year 2023 very effectively. So I'll come and have my fixed costs. I'll come and have my fixed cost, which ideally will just be the same all through. So I'll just pick that one up to December that will be the same value right then come and uh, talk about our variable cost here so basically our variable cost we should be talking of now variable cost by unit times number of units right so in that case I can lock this 27 right that is uh, of course E E27, that is our E20. E20 is our variable cost. So basically, you can just lock that. To, mm -hmm. Then I drag all through. So this will be our this will be our variable cost. Therefore, my total cost for this year, my total cost I should be having. Our total cost there for year we should be having the summation of variable cost and fixed costs so that as of the end of the day if we are to determine our total cost of course alt equal sign so basically this will be our total cost you see this will be our total this will be our total cost so we can have it with yellow so basically this will be our total cost and uh, in that case, we've uh, kind of, uh, in this case, we've used a basically high-low method to come up with our total cost for the financial year 2023. This is our forecast now. This is our forecast. And this is how we can use uh, basically high-low in uh, data analytics or rather to analyze our data and also forecasting our data. So key elements is uh, for you to be able to recall the minimum function and uh, maximum function as well as index match function which will be of help here which will really really assist us when you are looking at a high low high low method yeah so to this point guys uh, that is uh, what you are required to do and uh, that will mark the end of uh, our high low method thank you so much and let us meet in our next session thank you